my name is Princess Zahra Mustafa. How do the I find myself in the political space? Some people refer to me as a politician. Um, you know, I have been pioneering the um, advocacy for youth inclusion in politics. Um, I am a believer in the fact that we can clean up our political space and we can do things differently. Um, and I'm an advocate for more women in politics. I'm an advocate for a deliberate generational shift in power. I'm a wife, I'm a mother of three, and um, I'm definitely an, a member of the All Progressive Congress. I see myself as a social reformer, so I am on the path of trying to do things differently and trying to do things correctly. Um, royalty, I, I, I was born into this, so I don't really know anything different. You know, it's just part of life. Um, again, I, I think a lot of these things are just titles that I like the title, so I use it. I just look at it that way, but nothing else. Like I said, for me, I'm, I've always been um, different. I've always decided to just live my life and be myself. And if you go based on history, those who have truly made a difference, they actually were royals. If you talk about the likes of the Usman Danfodio and all, those are our real forefathers and they led us and I'm following in their footsteps in, you know, in the example of actually being, um, being, being a good role model to people around you. If you look at it um, across the globe, not even looking, not taking it even from the Nigerian perspective, let's take for instance, the Brits who were our colonial masters, right? That's what the Royals in the, Brit in, in the UK do. They advocate for positive change within their, you know, the environment, their society. They even advocate for positive change in the ECOWAS, you know, which is why you find them traveling and discussing issues that are close to their heart. For me, one of the issues that are, is predominantly in my heart at the moment. In fact, what I feel I was born for is pioneering or fighting for the cause of a generational shift in power. I believe that until Nigeria is able to evolve, give birth to brand new leaders, we are not moving anywhere. We're going around in circles. We need to be deliberate about breaking the chain and actually moving on to something more productive. And it has to be deliberate. Those our leaders have done good for us, but they have given us their best. It's time for us to also rise up and take the mantle and add our culture to making Nigeria the dream that we all want it to be. Readiness. There are a lot of young people who are ready, who are capable, who have the capacity. Um, the Godfatherism, right? It's like any business, politics in Nigeria has, is in some form of business. People invest and they expect rewards. In any investment, there are dividends, right? So I, I don't have anything against godfathers. I don't have a godfather. I'm not looking for a godfather. I'm not interested in that. But if somebody has taken their time to build a structure, there's nothing wrong with that, right? If the structure is purposeful, if it's meaningful, if it's for continual progress, because to be honest with you, there's no way that you'll be part of building something. You sweat and you've worked hard to build something good and you want your whoever takes over from you to come and destroy your hard work. So you would have an interest in your successor. That's normal, right? If, if it's Godfatherism in that sense, then it's okay. But if it's Godfatherism in the sense of you came into power to embezzle and you want to keep a stooge to continue to embezzle through that stooge, then we have a problem. You understand what I mean? So there's different, you know, spectras for this. In I think it's mainly because it's laden with so much personal interest from both parties, from the legislative, from the governors who are stifling it, and Mr. President knows. It's a clash of personal interests, which he's not interested in being part of. The part of the electoral bill for me that I feel is very necessary for Nigerians is the electronic transmission, because this would ensure that our votes will count. With regards to direct primaries, indirect primaries, I have seen fraud done in direct primaries. I have seen fraud done in indirect primaries. So as a politician, as a grassroots politician, I know that it makes no difference. But when it comes to electronic transmission of results, we saw it work in Anambra and it worked so well. So I want us to encourage not every part of that bill is perfect, 
But what, like they say, we shouldn't throw away the baby with the bathwater. What we can salvage from it should be salvaged and maybe the other part should be refined. As a Nigerian today, I am a proud APC member. You know why? I fought the system and we brought the system to a standstill and our leaders listened and are doing what we want. I've not seen that done in any other political party in Africa, talk less of Nigeria. We had issues whereby all the leaders put together were unable to pick a convention date. The young people within the party on the platform of the Progressive Youth Movement came together and said to our leaders we must have a convention on February the 26th. Mr. President listened and today we have a convention on February the 26th. We have something called the mandate of the youth, which is simply asking that all the deputy and all the vice position be given to people under the age of 50. No, those are younger stakeholders. You need to understand the intricacies within politics. Those are younger stakeholders. You can't just, you know, eliminate the fact that there is, there has been um, a, a whole generation that has been swallowed by the fact that our leaders have, you know, stayed excessively longer than they should have. So you have you can't you can't just let go of that generation. They, they must still be carried along. So we're looking for inclusiveness. We're looking for hopefully a younger chairmanship, a, a younger chairman for the All Progressive Congress. This is where we're leaning towards. Um, but one thing that we're definitely not going to compromise on is the fact that we must have all the vice and deputy positions within the party. That's progress. If you check our um, the opposition, you'd see that most of the vice and chairman and deputy positions are held by people that are in their 70s and 60s. So if I'm telling you that people under the 50s should hold these positions, then it's progress. The current APC woman leader has done a great job by trying to at least initiate the, um, you know, the idea that women should come together for a conference to talk about these issues that we've been facing regarding women involvement. This has, I haven't experienced a women conference before of the APC, so I was very happy that she did that. It's one step. Now it's for us to build on that. That's a platform for us to use to amplify the problem. Not just that, I'll tell you another major thing is women don't present themselves. We need to start to present ourselves for positions and we need to be deliberate about supporting ourselves. We are also not our own, we are also our own worst enemy in most situations because when a woman presents themselves rather than support her you will see a huge long queue of women go and queue behind another man why there's financial gains we don't have the same financial muscle as our male counterparts but we we can we can support each other in solidarity and each time every woman gets into office she should she should we have to make it um a thing we have to be deliberate about ensuring that we bring up other women around